Ah, the great outdoors. Nothing quite like sitting back, relaxing, and super-eating some mithril ore in the Lumbridge Swamp Mine. What am I doing this for, you ask? Well, 50 magic, of course. What's 50 magic for? 50 magic is really important for me. Once I hit 50, I'll be able to use magic dart, which will be essential for barrows. Speaking of barrows, we're getting very close to that, aren't we? Let's take a look. Without access to any barrows gear, here's what our setups are going to look like for completing the activity. The range setup is pretty scuffed, but it's all we've got. Since prayer potions are pretty hard to come by, we're going to try to avoid using them altogether. We're going to start off by killing Carol and Aram, the two brothers we can't prevent damage from unless using prayer. At this point, we're just hoping that we don't encounter them in the tunnels instead of in their regular tombs. For the Aram fight, I decided to opt for steel knives as opposed to any sort of arrow counterpart. Although the accuracy is pretty low, the overall DPS is much higher and they're well worth using. The only real downside to steel knives is that they use more bars to make them. Arrows will use one bar per 15 arrows, whereas knives will use one bar per five. For the Carol fight, we're going to be using magic dart for the entirety of it. We don't have a whole lot of death and mind runes, but these should replenish themselves as we do more and more Barrows runs. Our prayer is already getting pretty low, and you can see me trying to pray flick this as much as I possibly can. In retrospect, I should have done this fight before Aram. He's much harder to kill. Since we've run out of prayer already, we're having to use up the sharks that I fished in Birderot. This is totally alright, we've got a ton of them, and that's what they're there for. From here on out, Barrows becomes way easier. We can pseudo safe spot all of the brothers around this sarcophagus in each of their respective rooms. For both Toreg and Varak, we can safe spot attack them from either side of the sarcophagus. It's important here to turn off run and manual cast the attack. Auto casting leads to a significant startup delay, which will get you hit. After the attack animation starts, you can control click away to run off. It'll enable run for you. Again, it's important to have run turned off for this, otherwise it just won't work. If you do leave run on, when you try to attack him with magic dart, you'll simply run up to him too quickly and he'll take a swing at you. Though this method requires a lot of effort and is pretty arduous, it's really worth it because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do barrows at all with our current gear. Now that Torag's down, let's see the other method we have to employ for Darok and Guthan. It's the same principle, but there's a key difference. Darok and Guthan can only be trapped on the north and south side of the coffin. This means that we can only attack them half as often. Fighting these brothers is an exercise of watching your run energy at this level. Since Carol's effect lowered our agility, our run energy is replenishing way slower than normal. Coupling this with the fact that we have to run around an entire half length of the coffin, plus the fear of Darok almost one-hitting us, makes for a kind of tricky encounter. Based on how easy Aram was and how difficult Carol is, it probably makes more sense to just pray against Darok and then take on Carol. Aram isn't too bad without prayer, and we'll use very few sharks doing so. Once we get Darok down to this level of HP, we really have to watch what we're doing, as a single screw up could mean the end. All in all, I don't find the method too bad, and it's the one I'm most familiar with now. I've skipped over Varak because it's identical to Torag, but Guthans are tunnel, so this will be a little different. In each of the four corner rooms, there's a ladder safe spot we can abuse. Even if the ladder isn't there, there's still an invisible spot that the brothers just can't pass through. If we're lucky enough to get a melee brother for our tunnel, it's a cakewalk. Obviously, this method doesn't work for Aram and Carol though, because they can just shoot back through the safe spot. In the future, I'll definitely be using Windbolt to conserve some death and mind runes. It's spots like these where it would really come in handy. Conserving our runes is our top priority. We never gain access to completing any of the Mauritania diaries. Each one requires us to leave the swamp, and that's against the rules so we'll never actually have access to the double rune reward from the hard diary. Now that Guthin's down, let's see how our first run went. Too high. All right, let's, let's, uh, what do we get? Oh, guys, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
We got ridiculously lucky for that. According to Mod Kieran, the odds of getting a Barrows piece are about 1 in 17. The one we got's quite good too. Varax plate skirt's gonna be fantastic for tanking. It's the best possible tank leggings we could get from Barrows, as it's identical to Torag's, but it gives prayer bonus. Speaking of prayer, restoring it between runs is really tiresome and annoying. We've gotta go all the way to the Nature Grotto to do so. Eventually our Barrows runs will speed up significantly, but for now we're taking at least 20 minutes per run. That's only three runs per hour, so you can imagine how long this is going to take. In addition to this, if we happen to get a Carol Tunnel, we're probably going to have to go bank for some more food, as we're just going to run out and it won't be feasible. Here you can see an example of the invisible ladder safe spot I was mentioning before. Even though our ladder didn't happen to spawn in this room, there's still a safe spot programmed in for it, so we can abuse it like this. We also didn't have to run away from the skeleton like you saw me do there. I only did it because I'm so low on health right now and I'm all out of food. What do we get? Oh, dudes! <laughs> Jesus Christ, this luck! Two unique pieces in three chests is no joke. So here you can see what I was talking about before. We got a Carol Tunnel this time, and I've had to go bank and grab an entire new inventory of food. In addition, I've got to use a prayer potion. Carol is by far the most challenging brother to kill. In terms of our ranged gear, we really only have access to snakeskin, which is pretty terrible. At the very least, we've got a rune square and a rune med helm, and as funny as it sounds, an amulet of defense. Since I'm using prayer for most of the fight, I just brought along some bass to save sharks. This is the last brother we have to kill, so it's not a huge deal. In terms of getting up reward potential, I always shoot for 86%. For me, this is the best area in terms of resources and time. At this reward potential, we get the maximum amount of runes and we don't get any bolt racks, so it's pretty ideal. Right now though, I'm shooting for 100 because I'm trying to get a D med. Afterward, there's no point in going past 86%. Now that we've killed all the brothers and maxed our reward potential, let's see what we get. Oh, dudes, Carol's top, that's amazing. Within just 10 chests, we've managed to get three unique items and all good ones. But that's enough of Barrows. Let's change the pace. Here's something I haven't seen a lot of yet, RuneCraft. We hit five RuneCraft off stream. We got a genie. Uh, I've been waiting for this level for a long time because once we hit 30, we can do Darkness of Hollow Veil and we can do uh, the new one, Taste of Hope. Finishing a Taste of Hope is crucial. The reward from that quest is Draken's Medallion, which serves as an unlimited teleport to Raids 2. If we enter the Theater of Blood and resign, it serves as a way for us to restore our stats and prayer very easily, which means we aren't going to have to deal with trekking all the way through the swamp to restore our prayer like before. Saving an inventory space for Draken's Medallion during our Barrows runs will let us do some sub-20 minute ones. One of the quest rewards for Darkness of Hollowvale is an XP Tome that lets you gain experience in any skill above level 30. Since runecrafting is so difficult for really anybody to train, but especially me, this is one of the prime candidates for that XP Tome, so I thought I'd get it to level 30 before doing the quest. I've got to admit, out of all the quests in this game, this is probably one of my least favorite. To do it, we have to go through Mayor Ditch multiple times, and it gets very convoluted and confusing. However, being a prerequisite for A Taste of Hope, it's essential that we complete it. There are no real challenging parts of the quest, it's really just annoying and confusing. The region we're traveling to is Mayor Ditch, and it doesn't really offer us a whole lot of content. The unique enemy, Virewatch, can be found here, but can also now be found north of Raids 2. So there's not really any reason to go here, aside from doing the quest. Now that we've gotten here, we have to start traversing the rubbled and derelict city to try to get to Old Man Ral. As we're doing this, we have to keep our eyes peeled for the Virewatch above, as they'll start interrogating us if they catch us. 
The whole region's really thematic and interesting. It's a shame there isn't more content here that we can actually use. After speaking with Ral for a little bit, we learn that he knows the location of the Meyer Key. He gives the location to us, which is in Sector 3 of this area. But before we head on over, we need to get some gear. Trader Sven sells us Fashionscape. He sells us the Virewatch outfit and the Citizen outfit. If we buy the Virewatch outfit, it makes us less likely to be found by the Virewatch above. This is a good thing, and we certainly buy it. I'll spare you from watching the long and boring journey throughout Mayor Ditch, but we eventually find the Meyer Key hideout and enter the trapdoor. So we finally made contact with the Meyer Key in Mayor Ditch. He's skeptical at first, but we convince him. He gives us a note to give to Veliaf back in Berderot. This quest involves a ton of backtracking, but I've cut out most of it because it really isn't all that exciting. Let's go back. When we finally meet up with Veliaf, he eventually gets us to go talk to Drezel back in Paterdomus. This is the same priest we helped in the Priest in Peril quest. He gave us Wolfbane, a dagger that proved to be really important for the beginning of this account. Anyways, we talk to Drezel, and he says there's some strange going-ons to the west, so we head on over. Fair warning, we are going outside of our area for this quest. It doesn't happen too often on the account, but when it does, it's usually for a pretty good reason. Being able to do a Taste of Hope and get Draken's Medallion is a good reason. So we go to King Rold and Varrock and tell him everything that's happened. He wants to help us, but says it's going to take some time. Help isn't on its way, and we've kind of come here for nothing. We teleport back. Veliaf and his contact in Mayor Ditch instruct us to go scout out Castle Draken and see what the vampire is up to. They're worried he's found a way to get past the enchantment on the River Salve, and they have to look into this. We do more and more backtracking and eventually find this guy, who gives us the equipment needed to take some sketches of the castle. We start doing so, but as we do, We lose the fight, but live to see another day. We return to the Meyerkey hideout and report what happened. We're soon asked to investigate a laboratory. Someone in Meyerditch was investigating the vampire's weaknesses. We have to go find the lab and see if they stumbled across anything interesting. After tons of backtracking, we find the lab. Inside the lab, we telegraph a book on blood alchemy, which is probably what we were looking for. We head back to show the contact what we've learned. We hand over the book we picked up and he seems optimistic about finding a defense against the vampires. Now we just have to tie up the loose ends and head back to Veliev in Berderot. We explain the remainder of the quest to Veliev and he's excited that we're still alive and kicking. He gives us the quest reward and our quest is complete. We gain some thieving levels and some construction levels from finishing this quest, but the most exciting part is that we'll soon be able to do a Taste of Hope.